Um, Josh Childress is here and he has not uh, asked a question in Are You Live? So we've got to call on him now. And, and this, is, this will be funny for you, Warren, because uh, you and Josh have a major disagreement, but I bet you you'll have an agreement here. Go ahead, Josh, unmute and go for it. Um, well, thank you for taking your time to uh, talk to us. Um, I actually recently had heard about you uh, from my, my former pastor. He was raving about your, your book, The Boy Crisis. Um, what's, his name? Gonna, what's his name? Uh, Rick Luster. Rick oh, is that Jonah's father? Jonah's father, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so when I saw the guest, I, I texted the brother and said, hey, let your dad know uh, that, that, uh, that he's going to be on. So I don't know if he's on or not. But um, So you know, let me just set this up. This is sort of, I hope you don't mind, Josh. But like, no. so Josh um, was in the Border Patrol. He's also an Iraq and Afghanistan vet. Mm -hmm. um, spent his whole life around guns and Jonah, he and Jonah are doing a course for Renegade University on armed self-defense. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Teaching Crazy. people how to use guns safely in self-defense. Yes. So, but he's may have different ideas about guns, but anyway, that's off the topic. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I I'm speaking for uh, the majority or anything, but this, this idea of, of masculinity being something that we should lionize or or prop up has just always been difficult for me. Um, I, like Dad said, I you know I spent time in the military, law enforcement, and outwardly it it probably appears like I'm a very masculine, you know, rough and tumble kind of guy, but a lot of that is um, you're not. <laughs> no, no. I mean, from from a very early age, yeah. I was incredibly sensitive. Loved bright colors, and you know, especially pinks and purples, and you know, uh, and was teased about it mm -hmm. you know, quite a bit. Huh. Um, and so, honestly, the the majority of my life has been trying to find this balance of how to get through in the world. You know in some sort of normal fashion and how to be true to myself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And to me, it, it's, it's kind of boiled down to finding a balance of, of, you know, what, what's, I think naturally for me been, you know, having these quote unquote feminine qualities or characteristics mm -hmm and developing the, the masculine ones that I lack. But um, I just kind of always felt like an outsider because I, I could care, I'd rather go to an art museum than, than watch any sport other than fighting. I, I like to watch fights, but um, <laughs> uh -huh. I just, it, it's, and I wonder where, if, if there's any connection between the toxic portion of masculinity um, and the this intense focus on let's make our boys boys and you know turn them into real men, like when it comes down to it, I've always been able to hang with the shooting and the fighting and all that stuff with the other dudes, mm -hmm. but I guess. I don't know. I, I I just bristle a little bit when it comes to um, focusing on masculinity rather than uh, being well-rounded. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I, well, I love I love that, Josh. By the way, I love that. We could, I want to talk more about that. Maybe maybe even on the podcast at some point. I love. I'm that. I'm an open book, especially now that I'm not connected to anything. I I you know, love. I could, I love that about you. Yeah. Yeah. Warren, what do you think? What do you say? Yeah, I, I love that about you. And I love that. That's exactly where I'm going with in the boy crisis and the myth of male power, basically saying, historically speaking, we were required to not be human beings, but to be human doings, training ourselves to be disposable so we could be strong enough to fight the next war so we wouldn't all be under Nazi, Nazi rule. Um, and so, and that served a very strong purpose. Uh, you know, we, we did protect uh, the country, we protected our families, um, and, and, but we sacrificed ourselves. But in order to do that, we had to do, we had to disconnect from who we were 
and prove constantly prove ourselves um, as you know somebody that you know I, I don't I I remember you know d don't admit that you did too much homework um, don't admit that you really rather go to a museum than you know than than um, you know than a, a watch a football game um, and you, you, there and so to me what 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 our parents and our grandparents have given us is in the process of giving us in developed nations the ability to survive, it has created the freedom to be able to, for the first time in human history, to be able to say, who do we want to be as opposed to who do I need to be? And so that, that takes the straitjacket off of masculinity. But it means that, but, you know, boys have, uh, when, men, when men's groups are formed, there's never a men's group that, you know, that I'm aware of and have participated in where there's not hundreds of different ways that the boys and men in the group uh, don't feel like that, you know, that they've been pressured to act a certain way and to behave a certain way and to um, not express uh, certain types of feelings depending on what, what his background is. And, you know, the value of an intact family, the value of a father and mother um, is that there's, a, there's, there's an, um, is that there's a, is an opportunity now in bringing up boys to say, not who I need you to be. I need you to protect, you know, to prepare for war. I need you to prepare to be a CEO. I need to prepare you to go be a medical doctor or a lawyer. I need to prepare you to make a lot of money. Um, but rather to say, Josh, we love you. Who are you? Talk to us about who you are. What matters to you? What are your goals? Well, Daddy, I don't even know what my goals are. Well, you know, when I, when I, um, what, what are some possibilities? What are you thinking about? What, what appeals to you? And an observant parent will, will soon see, you know, that the boy picks up a truck and is fascinated with it, or the boy picks up a doll and plays with it, you know, or a hundred other, other things about him or her, her personality, and then begins to develop that child in such a way that gives him an opportunity to explore who he is. Um, if he's gay, if he's straight, if he's trans, um, yes, talk to me about that. Is that a fad? Was somebody at school trans or gay and you really respect them and you want to be like them? Or, are you, or what else is happening for you inside of you that is moving you in that direction? And so, um, and so that there's permission, but there's also a consequence that is prepared for. That, that is, for example, my father, when, I, when he saw that I felt like I, the people felt I was a decent writer, um, and I was wanting to be a writer. He said, yeah, Warren, I want to warn you. Um, only about 1% of, of writers get published. And the ones that do get published, they make an average of about $5,000 a year on a book that does get published. And so, and, and also a very small percentage of the ones that have, can find a publisher even finish the book um, that they do. So there's a very, and if you can't find a publisher and, get, and, and make a decent amount of money, you're not going to have an easy time finding a wife. And he would point out to me things like Zelda Fitzgerald, who wouldn't marry F. Scott Fitzgerald until he produced his first bestseller. And so the the um, so those are the things that um, boys can be freer from. Those that, from my father's perspective, he was born in 1910. He, by the age of 35, he lived through two world wars and a depression. And so him advising me that that um, it was very important to be able to make money before you could get married. Uh, was was advice that came out of his heart and his experience, um, but fortunately we don't need to have boys be that strict about that these days. Although we also need to have boys understand that there are a relatively small number of women who will get married to you, who want children, who um, if they perceive you as always earning less than they in the future, <clears throat> that they'll be interested in marrying you and having children with you, and so. So, so sh sharing over these family dinner nights that I was talking about before, um, you know, what the realities are at the same time as you're sharing, um, encouraging the boy to become who he is, that I think is the proper approach with one additional thing, which is teaching someone to dream about, let's say, being a movie star, an actor, and a writer, or whatever, teaching them to dream without teaching them postponed gratification is doing them a disservice because almost all dreams, the more fulfilling your work, the less it's likely to pay because there's a lot of demand uh, for people to have fulfilling occupations in relation to the supply. If you want to be an artist, 
people are going to need to pay a garbage collector more because they need their garbage picked up more than they need somebody in art history is an art history major. So if you have a if you if you want to be fulfilled, the chances are fairly good that you have to be at the very top of your field in order to make a good living doing it. In order to be at the top of the field, you have to master postponed gratification. In order to be an Olympic star, you have to give up most of the rest of your life. That's not necessarily a positive, but for some people it will be a positive. And so you, as a parent, that your job is to, is to share, not just Josh, you're a wonderful, sensitive, caring man. Why don't you don't, don't worry, be a designer. Um, and, and, but, but even though you may be heterosexual, be a designer. Um, and the, and, but also, if you want to do something like out, be outstanding in a field that's very fulfilling, you have to have the discipline to be at the top of that field and to do those things. So that combination of nurturing your dream and having the discipline to be able to fulfill it in order to be able to make a living doing it um, is a really important um, example of what um, children oftentimes um, encouraged properly by moms and dads um, are best able to do. If you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like to participate in RU Live sessions or just watch them live, become a member of Renegade University by going to renegadeuniversity.com. Once you're a member, you'll also be able to watch the entire RU Live sessions on our website at renegadeuniversity.com. So go there, become a member at any level, and we'll see you there.